So when we are speaking about the future, when we were young and we were dreaming about the future, we were thinking about all these things in the sky that we saw in Matrix or in other, uh, in other movies. And so this is my pleasure now to welcome Jerry Sanders, the CEO of Skytran NASA Space and Company. Where are you, Jerry? Thank you. Jerry, I have to say that I'm really eager and I'm waiting for NASA Tran, for Skytran to be in Tel Aviv. And I used to be also in the past elected in Paris. And please, come to Paris. Please come to save us from the traffic. So well, Actually, I'll be in Paris next week. We're talking to Airport de Paris about building the system both at Orly and Charles de Gaulle and combining the two You will airports. have all my support, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Thank please. You. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. It's really an honor to be after Jumbo and Yossi, two established people in the transportation industry, although they may not like what I have to say. Um, who likes traffic? Can I hear some hands? Who likes traffic? Okay. Exactly. Well, well the, the, the good news is there's going to be more traffic. So anyone who likes traffic, settle in, even with Uber Pool, with Yossi's trains, we're going to get more traffic. And why is that? We're going to get more traffic because shared cars are on the road more time than cars that are not shared. Buses and BRT take up two or three of these lanes. Self-driving cars are going to create a friggin' mess. Don't let uh, Google fool you. Because self-driving cars are going to put on the road cars for people who do not have driver's license. Grandma can sit at home and get a computerized car to pick up stuff from the pharmacy. So now you're gonna have a lot more cars. And if you've ever tried to transfer a file from a Mac to a PC, rest assured that these systems are gonna have a hard time talking to one another and to the environment. Where taxis and Uber and all the others are putting cars on the road for a longer period of time than a car would otherwise be on the road because a Google pool car, pardon me, an Uber pool car and other such cars like Lyft and Get Taxi are on the road for longer and they're gonna create more congestion. Electric cars, of course, create just as much traffic as anyone else and they're stuck in the traffic with anyone else. Carpools take away lanes from other systems and uh, they don't bring about people pooling in cars. And of course, over a third of the greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions are a result of traffic. So what are we offering instead? We're offering to go above the traffic. And what you're seeing here is a SkyTrans solution. It's a simulation of how our system works inside the urban environment. We're above traffic. We never get stuck in traffic. You don't stop at any station unless it's your station. Um, people speak about, well, let's, you know, computerized cars are going to free up more space and uh, the pool, car pooling companies are going to uh, clear up more space. But a known fact, and it's been out there for years and it's established by the London School of Economics, MIT, the Environmental Research Council, all of these studies show, and they go back decades, the more uh, that vehicle kilometers traveled, rises in direct proportion to available lane of kilometer roadway, meaning you build more roads or you clear up, clear up more space on the road, you get more traffic. And everyone's experienced this. So what does SkyTran do? Well, we're magnetically levitated, and you'll see correctly pointed out that today maglev can cost 500 to 600 million dollars a kilometer, requires all sorts of infrastructure. SkyTran costs six million dollars a kilometer. 600 million versus six million because of our unique technology. We also incorporate magnetic propulsion, unique patented to us, and we have magnetic switching, something no one has been able to do until now. SkyTrain is built My in a colleague. factory. Oops, sorry about that. SkyTrain is built in a factory. It's like Lego. It comes to the site on a truck, assembled on site, so we can roll this out in a matter of months, as opposed to the 20 years that the Tel Aviv subway is under construction. Um, here's a quick My discussion colleague, of how this system uh, works. We're based at the NASA Ames Research Center. What he's showing you is he's holding a magnet in his hand. Magnets are invisible force that attract other magnets. Uh, attracts other magnets and they attract iron. He's pointing to the top sheet which is plastic. There's no iron in plastic and the bottom sheet is aluminum. There is no iron in aluminum. So he's going to drop the magnet and you'll see what happens. 
from the plastic to the aluminum, okay, we get it, drop it. <laughs> there we go. So he drops it and it just falls straight down. Why? Because of gravity. It's going to do it again, drops the magnet, it falls straight down. Now, what's cool about aluminum is although it doesn't have any iron and it's not magnetic, it does conduct electricity because it has something that physicists call loose electrons. And those loose electrons conduct electricity, but on magnets, they also act sometimes like heavy molasses. And you see? The magnet comes to almost a full stop simply by changing the orientation of the magnet. We're going to show it to you again. From the plastic to the aluminum, boom, complete stop. Now, anyone who's been on a roller coaster has experienced this because this is how roller coasters stop. You can go very fast and then boom, you come to an almost immediate stop. Why? Because of this molasses effect. So what did our engineers do? They thought, well, if we can change the orientation of these magnets and put two magnets together, we can fly. And that's what you're seeing here. This is the magic of magnetic flight. This is just like a glider glides on air. Our wings, we call these our magnetic wings, glide along this aluminum. And they're doing it on a magnetic wave that they themselves are actually generating. So no power is required. Now look what happens. We put a SkyTran vehicle on our magnetic wings. And all we have to do is push this vehicle forward or pull it forward and you're going to see what happens. Bingo, flight. And understand that this flight is free. We're not spending any energy to get the flight. And what does the flight get us? Zero friction. And what happens when you remove friction from transportation? Your energy uses drops, drops precipitously. So all we do is we take all of this stuff and we give it a little push. If any of you have played air hockey or ice hockey, you know what happens when you give that puck a little push, boom, it'll go forever. That's how SkyTran is efficient, cost effective, and really the game changer. This is a picture of our magnetic wing at Israel Aerospace Industries. They're working with us in building this system. It's a full-size wing. We have two of those on each vehicle. But how do we get the propulsion we uh, spoke about earlier? Well, what you're seeing there is our magnetic Propeller, this is a first. We've taken a simple motor, wrapped it with a neodymium magnet. When the magnet turns to the right, as most of you may recall from high school physics, it wants to go forward. When it turns to the left, it wants to go backward. So look what happens when we place this in the okay, aluminum cylinder. Okay, April 5th, 20 foot uh, bogey test, number three. Go ahead, Robert, let it roll. <laughs> So what you're seeing there is a subscale demonstration of the motor, the magnetic propeller at NASA. It is actually floating within that aluminum cylinder. It's not in contact with the sides of the cylinder, and so it can attain great speeds, very little energy, very little heat accumulation. So where does all this stuff go? Well, it goes inside what we call our guideway, and uh, this is what the guideway looks like. The upper part is steel, that cylinder is aluminum, and those two side panels are aluminum. The propeller goes inside the aluminum cylinder, as you saw, and the magnetic wings ride against these two aluminum sidebars. And by so doing, the propeller moves the vehicle forward, which is attached to the wings, and the wings lip, lift up just like an airplane, and it takes off and it flies. So this is the first true magnetic airplane, using very little energy. In fact, we use less than one-third the energy of a hybrid car. I spoke about Charles de Gaulle in Orly airports. This is what it would look like inside the terminal. It's a very small footprint. It can go inside buildings. It can go above buildings. It can go um, on sidewalks, on boulevards, and so forth. Uh, the system has a neural network, so it's constantly learning where vehicles are needed and at what time, and it automatically sends the vehicles to those locations. But you'll also have an icon on your phone. You'll touch it. The system knows who you are, where you are. It will send you a prompt. If you like it, you'll say yes. You'll get a barcode. You'll hold that barcode up to the vehicle, and it will open up for you and take you to your destination. We have a whole host of station configurations that we can play with because as I mentioned, this is like Lego. It's built in a factory, it's modular, it all comes together. So we have um, any number of station configurations and uh, are able to roll this out uh, quickly. So uh, versus um, rail, uh, we talked about that earlier. Rail, of course, takes up more surface space in San Jose, Silicon Valley, where we come from, $100 million a, a mile. 
It uh, cut through the neighborhood. It has fences, very hard to cross from one side of the street to the other. Of course, SkyTrain doesn't do any of that. A lot cheaper than rail and will actually take you from where you get on the system to where you want to get off the system. You don't have to follow anyone else's schedule. You don't have to stop at any stations along the way. And you'll get there much faster, much more efficient. And uh, we think you're going to like it. So uh, with that, thank you very much. And uh, look forward to the panel.